Hey y'all. So, Icelander Mirror today, and let's get right into it. Opponent won the die roll and chose to go first, which makes sense. Because this, this matchup is really kind of about the board state, like you want to build up your board state as soon as you can. Uh, that's a combination of Amulets of Ice, Frost Axes, and Chills. And opponent has an extremely nutty start. Uh, turn zero, Amulet of Ice with a Frost Axe. So, you know, they don't let us filter and they set up two pieces of uh, board state like immediately. So that's, that's really bad for us. And we don't have a way to set up own board state. So over here, I'm trying to think if it's worth it to E-Strike into Channel League Frigid. Because Channel League Frigid is honestly quite a power card in this matchup. But I decide uh, I'll just E-Strike for 7. Hold on to an extra blue in case I need to block. And yeah, and we'll go from there. So neither of us have AB5. Um, I've come to not like AB5 in this matchup. Because I found it it's very rare that I actually end up needing the 5th point of AB. Um, really the only time is, say, a Red Ice Fane that has no Insidious Shield behind it. Um, because if there's Insidious Shield behind the Red Ice Fane, you aren't AB5-ing anyway. So, uh, the AB5 rarely matters, but the 2 block on the headpiece actually does matter. Uh, I mean, it's an extra 2 life, and Ice Hunters do send physical attacks at each other, so you don't, you know, charge up the Luvin. For that reason, I've cut the 5th point of AB from my list, looks like my opponent has as well. And yeah, I just have a block 2. Carnet Peak is basically blocked in this matchup. So anyway, so I'll put in response to our E-Strike with another Frost X. So honestly, at this point, I was kind of close to conceding. I was like, like two Frost X and an Amulet of Ice, and I don't have a single piece of board to say it. It feels really bad. Uh, but I decided I'll just uh, stick it out and, and see how the game goes. Um, so yeah, and I'm also glad I kept to my extra card, because I'll be taking two damage from Frost Fights. So... You know, I can just go ahead and block it. I'll keep the channel League Frigid, because like I said, that's the power card in this matchup. Okay, so we draw into a Frost X, which is nice. Uh, opponent is just passing, though, so... Uh, this is a bit of an awkward hand to play out the channel, because it would involve me needing to pitch Frost X either now or on my turn to keep the channel. So I decide not to play out the channel this turn. So on our turn, we have the option to be aggressive and send an attack at our opponent with like the Fighting Spirit of the CNC. Um, but there's really no point like that. How to say our opponent is very incentivized to kind of just like block with two cards and then you know use the arsenal. Because uh, once we already have two frost Texas on us, every ice card they play on my turn has an has additional text on it that's like plus two damage. So yeah, I might as well just try and set up my own board there and hope my opponent doesn't send anything at me. And they don't, and this is actually a very big tell. Um, the fact that I all I did was a setup card and they didn't blast me tells me that the arsenal card is either like a defensive card, like a respite, uh, like OSS respite, or it's, or it's just some other red. Basically, I now have the read that the arsenal card is not a blue ice card because there's no way with me having two frost X's on the field and, you know, having ended my turn basically by just playing on my frost X, uh, there's no way my opponent doesn't try and use that card uh, if they could. So, that's an important read. Anyway, so our opponent on their turn starts off with an amulet. So they have yet another board state piece. Uh, this time I do f uh, respond with a channel like Frigid. And I have one floating in case my opponent wants to send any arcane. I get my Alluvian counter. So I, I really like channel like Frigid uh, in this matchup. Just the ease of getting to pitch and have one float to get a Alluvian counter is very nice. Okay, and then my opponent finds a third Frost X, so... <laughs> uh, they basically had two turns, like, the turn zero was Amulet of Ice into Frost X, and now this turn was also Amulet of Ice into Frost X. Um, so I'm feeling terrible. Really, the only thing that's at least keeping me alive for the next two turns is our Channel Lake Frigid, because it's, it's really, really difficult for um, Ice Ender to try and push meaningful damage uh, through a Channel Lake Frigid. So opponent blocks with their own Fighting Spirit, and since they're lower than me, they, they begin life. So he effectively blocks 6 on a 7 attack. Cool, and opponent just passes, which makes sense. I mean, when there's a uh, when there's a channel in the field, it's, it, like I said, it's very difficult for Ice to do something without also opening themselves up too much. So it's good that we got that, but it's really just, uh, it's really just buying time, because we are very far behind right now. Um, we have one Frost X on our opponent. Our opponent has two more Frost Xs and two more Amulets of Ice. So, we're currently like four pieces of board state behind our opponent. Uh, and now I'm trying to think if there's a way I can keep this channel around. Uh, which uh, is actually... 
it actually is technically possible if I go Fighting Spirit and then OSS Respite, like targeting like anything. Um, it is possible, which actually I think it's, it was probably right to do that actually because OSS Respite, when if I'm able to keep channel around, OSS Respite isn't going to be very useful anyway. So it's okay for me to get sort of just wasted because the channeling frigid is is really buying me a lot of time. So yeah, it probably would have been right to do that. Instead, I elect to play Amulet of Ice and then send off this Fighting Spirit and Arsenal, the, uh, probably the Cold Snap, which I guess is, it's also fine. Yeah, but looking back at this, I think I prefer the line where I keep channel around and I just waste away such respite. So, bit of a blunder by me there. Also, the <laughs> board state is kind of blocking what my opponent's blocking with, uh, but they blocked with two reds. Yeah, and then we are still cold time. And we turn to three reds, which is obviously very unfortunate. And when I'm in a position like this, I do I, I tend to just take the gamble that cold snap's gonna draw me a blue. So I I will pitch my blue here to cold snap. Okay, then my opponent plays a blue ice fan. And we are sort of drowning in Oasis Respites, so I do elect to just use it uh, on the ice fan. So this is really interesting, actually. So even though I did Oasis Respite on the Ice Fane, the way the... Like, damage prevention is a replacement effect. And so when it hits me, I actually have a... Like, my Arcane Barrier triggers and the Oasis Respite, like, prevention happens. And I can order it so that I can still actually use AB to block, like, one of it. And normally, obviously, that's, like, a bad idea. But in this case, it actually gives me the Luvian counter. So, you know, I use one AB to block the... To block one damage and OSS Respite absorbs the other two. Um, and then, yeah, and I get my Illuvian counter. I do immediately use it to just uh, waiting on my opponent, which my opponent does block. So that's interesting. They gave up their arsenal to block that, which I wasn't expecting because I was obviously holding on to CNC and being like, I'm going to CNC them and sort of item force them to use their arsenal um, or, uh, or, you know, lose their arsenal basically or use the Crown Providence. Um, but the fact that they blocked sort of gives me, means I'm not taking damage here. Yeah, uh, I think if they had a blue ice card, they should have just arsenaled it, because each of the blue ice cards have plus three damage, because I have three frost axes on me. There's that, and then, yeah, opponent comes out with a fighting spirit. We drew a bunch of two blocks, I mean, I'm not counting frost axe, because I need to play that. So I decided to block with my headpiece, because the, well, honestly, it's a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a, throwback to like at nationals there was one game where it was we were playing the mirror and i lost the game like obviously you know came down the last turn and you know my opponent popped off and managed to kill me with exact lethal and i still had my coronet peak on the field and my opponent you know was sending physical attacks at me so since then i've sort of realized i just need to snap block the first physical thing and i send the sends at me um with my card with my headpiece because yeah i, I don't want to run the risk of losing my chance to to block the two life so i block the two there and i just use my oasis respite this is so i can put cold snap in there instead um because my only other option was i can't block with the frost axe so i block with two other cards from hand i still only block four but if i pitch a card and play oasis respite i'm still blocking four with two cards but i get to refill my arsenal i get to cycle out my arsenal so i i like to do that uh and then just play the frost axe and I'm, this i'm sort of committing to taking a bunch of damage from like my opponent's arsenal here because the Frostbite plus whatever that is, plus the Moon, um, you know, with the Frost Axes would be a decent amount of damage, but I get to set up a Frost Axe. And we sort of do have the life lead here, so I'm hoping that me setting up this Frost Axe, taking damage to set up this Frost Axe is, uh, will pay off in the long run. Okay, so, yeah, I'm putting lens of Frost Axe Resolve, and I go to enter, and I'm fully expecting to get blasted. Uh, but they don't blast me, so again, I make the read that what their arsenal is, is a red. Because, yeah, again, I mean, that was definitely, like, if they had a blue ice card, they'd definitely play it there. So, the fact that it didn't, I'm making the read that that's a red card there. Which is, like, that's really good for us. We just spent a turn setting up a Frost Axe and did not get punished for it. Which is, which is very, very big. Okay, then my opponent plays this, uh, uh, this Barraging Broad Knight, where if I, yeah, if I block with, I'm super incentivized to block with, uh, two cards here. Uh, so I don't give it the buff. Uh, and what I'm going off of is, again, because of the read that I made with that, 
Arsenal cards are red. I realize I actually can just block this and just spend my turn setting up something else because uh, my opponent can't punish me if I just set up because they don't have an instant speed thing in the arsenal. So first things first, uh, I do the cold snap and we draw into respite, which is not great because um, it's another red. Uh, also, it's you know I can use it to block the barraging bronhide, but it doesn't count as a blocking card for the bronhide's effect. So I decide I'm just gonna block with the red hail and the frosting and just play energy potion on my turn. Normally, if I if I knew that my opponent's arsenal was something they could you know cast on my turn, I would hold on to a red hail to do something offensive on my turn. Uh, but since I know that that's not something they're gonna play on my turn, I'm free to just play out my energy potion. I'm free to block out here, just play out my energy potion, and not get punched for it. So that's that's really good for us. And I get to Arsenal Oasis Respite to sort of insulate me if they try and swing tempo with like a red ice fan. Yep, so we just play energy potion. So we're sort of catching up to our opponent's board state. Uh, you can count an energy potion as equivalent to an, to an amulet of ice, because really, I mean, they counteract each other, right? If they pop amulet of ice, I can pop energy potion and pay for it and just counteract it. So I have an, I have an e pot and an amulet of ice. They have two amulets of ice, so that cancels out. And then I have two frost texts on my opponent, and they have three on me. So I'm just one frost text behind my opponent now. Um, and then, yeah, that arsenal oasis respite does come in handy here, because our opponent sends an ice vein at us. So we can just respite, AB1 still get a Luvian counter, so that's, that feels really good. And that Ice Fane is from Arsenal, so that is what they had in Arsenal. So we made the correct read that that was not a blue in Arsenal. So it was a red Ice Fane. Um, we managed to counteract it, unless our opponent chooses to pop an Amulet of Ice here. Uh, but I think if my opponent chooses to pop an Amulet of Ice here, uh, I might have cracked an E-Pot, because I really want to set up this Insidious Chill. So yeah, and then we'll just, uh, we took one from the Waning Moon, because we still had one floating. Uh, I just took one from it, and we get a 7 Citrus Shell. Now, if my opponent doesn't set up their own board state, then I feel pretty even on the board state now, because I, I would equip, I would equate an Insidious Shell to a Frost X. So, I feel pretty even here. Uh, opponent sends an Ice Bolt at us from Arsenal. So this Ice Bolt is effectively coming in for 6, because of the Frostbite that it generates. Cool. So when you have 3 Frost Xs on you, and your opponent, you know, gives you a Frostbite, there is really no point blocking anything they do because, like, and you only have a blue to block, basically. I can just wait until my end step, until the Frostbite starts dealing me damage from the Frost Axes, and pitch my blue at that point. Because that's the point where it's like, my, my opponent no longer has priority windows because it's, it's the end step. So, and I'm still blocking three with my blue. I'm still getting as much value from it as possible. So, I can hide information from my opponent uh, in that sense, like whether I want to arsenal or whether I want to block, uh, which is it's a minor thing, but it, it is actually uh, it it can be the sort of difference maker in in the wizard mirror. So those instances of three, I can just take, and now I'm deciding whether I just want to go to my end step and take three damage from the, uh, from the frostbite, get to arsenal the cold snap, or pitch uh, uh, pitch the cold snap to block the three from the frostbites. Or I just pitch the cold snap now to Waning Moon, which breaks the Frostbite. So I do elect to do that because breaking the Frostbite is sort of effectively saving me three life. And just seeing that my opponent had those, like, only two cards remaining, I made the read that they can't really do anything offensive on me on their turn anyway. So I'm sort of free to actually just Waning Moon them here, um, save myself the three life, and I know they're just going to be passing and arsling. So... As a play I make, and then we get to draw an Ice Fane. So that's really good. So we are still... I, I guess we are sort of even on the board state at this point. So it's it's a little scary to start using your Ice Fanes, because uh, usually how these how the mirror goes is that um, the end of the game is decided by who starts triggering the chills first, um, and doesn't let the opponent like play the game for a while, um, to the point where the opponent's too low. So if I'm too early with using my chills and my ice veins, uh, if I don't sort of get opportunities to continue stripping, uh, continue, tr continue triggering my chills and stuff, I don't get them low enough by doing these sort of plays. I've just used my resources, um, and then I'm open up to my opponent doing the same thing to me, and then I die from that. 
yeah, it, it was a little scary to play that, but I have another piece of board state in this amulet of ice that I can set up. So uh, I decide I can just do that. Okay, so our opponent took three from the ice fan. We have an option here to waning moon. Um, because I think, yeah, again, with those few cards in my opponent's hand, I don't think I'm, I need to save a blue to protect, uh, to, to like, uh, pitch to AB, because I don't think my opponent's going to use the arsenal. Uh, I do get sort of, uh, proven wrong, because my opponent does use the arsenal at that point. I was not expecting that, given, because I did a fused ice vein with a chill. So I was not expecting that, uh, but they do. In response to Waning Moon, which is good for them, which is actually really good for them, because... Now, the Frostbite that they give me, I can't break by pitching to Waning Moon. Yeah, so that means I will be leaking two here from the Frostbite, unless I break the Frostbite by popping my Amulet of Ice. And given that my opponent played an Insidious Shield, now I'm again behind on the board. Um, I'm behind by like one piece, oh, a, a significant piece, like a, uh, a chill. Like a, a, I'm behind by one Frost Axe, basically. Um, given that that's the case, and I already used my Red Ice Fan and one chill trigger, I commit at this point to just try and be aggressive on my opponent. Um, so I commit to popping my Amulet of Ice here, which breaks the Frostbite, which means it's saving me three life. And it basically leaves my opponent completely open uh, on their turn. So I know I can pull a Blast, which gives them a Frostbite and Waning Moon for an additional five damage on them. Which also potentially draws me into another Ice Fane, which lets me sort of keep this chain going. And... To the point where once they get low enough, they might die to Striders. Um, that is, that's what I commit to at this point because I realized I'm back, I'm behind on the board again. I need to start using my resources, like the Amulet of Ice and the Chills, um, just to get my opponent, just to stop my opponent from using their resources uh, to the point where they're low enough and they die to my instant speed stuff. Okay, so our opponent uh, uh, pops Constellus and a Waning Moons us for three. Um, yeah, the, the other thing about sort of being aggressive and me popping Amulet of Ice here is that the three life I save by breaking the Frostbite is, is actually very, very big. Because if I can stay in the 20 range, then it's actually difficult, it's actually quite difficult for my opponent to sort of kill me in one turn. Even, even with three Frost Axes, like the 20-ish range is a bit tough on them. What they need to do is have a tempo swing turn where they send a red Ice Fane at me or something. And then when I have no cards, then they set up their like five card ice eternal or something. If they don't do, the, if I don't give them the chance to pivot with a three card hand, um, then me being a twenty something life is very difficult for them to deal with. So I do, I, I break the amulet of ice, breaking the frostbite, and my opponent discards a red ice vein, which is really really big for us. So because that is that is one of the pivot cards. So, okay, so now their turn, they're completely open, um, and we draw into our third Frost X, and, and another Ice Fane, so that's really good. So, I mean, at this point, both of us have seen two Ice Fanes. Our opponent saw the one red Ice Fane earlier, which we always had respited, and then they discarded this one to Amulet of Ice. Um, so, I'm, again, I'm just gambling that I draw into a blue with this Polar Blast, which is likely. Uh, but we don't, we draw a red, so a uh, little unfortunate there. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's still fine, like, we are like, tempo-wise, we are ahead. Board state-wise, we are now even further behind because we aggressively popped the Amulet of Ice. So, you know, I'm... Like like I said, at this point, I just need to commit straight ahead to not letting my opponent play the game for a while and getting them low enough where they need to be scared of popping off because I can kill them in response. So again, in that vein, since, since I didn't draw the blue, uh, what I want to do, obviously, is just pitch the blue um, to Ice Fane. Um which will trigger the chill, strip cards from my opponent, get to Arsenal and Frost Axe, and basically play it for free, because I would have stripped so many cards from them. Uh, because we didn't draw that blue, I actually like to pop my energy potion here. Um, again, this is just... I'm just going all out uh, in terms of using my resources now, uh, before my opponent gets to use theirs. And since my opponent doesn't have an Arsenal, because we took it out from them with the Amulet of Ice play, I know I can't get punished by popping his uh, energy potion. Like, normally, you know, opponent pops Tunic or energy potion, you want to give them a Frostbite immediately. But they don't have an Arsenal, so if they want to give me a Frostbite, they have to Storm Striders, which is a trade I will take. So I know I'm free to pop energy potion, and I do. And I pitch this red, and I fuse with a Hail, just to not let my opponent know that I have another Frost X, because that's, that's what I want to Arsenal. So you might say there was an argument to, like, pitch the Frost X 
to play the Ice Vein and fuse with the Hail, and then Arsenal the Hail. But the thing is, when I do like a tempo stealing, oh, and my opponent sees a third Ice Vein, they pitch it. Um, when I do a tempo stealing play like this, or not tempo stealing, I already had the tempo, but like, you know, when I strip my opponent's hand with an Ice Vein, yeah, with the Insidious Chill trigger, I really want to make sure I can play on my opponent's turn. And so I really want to arsenal the blue frost hex. Uh, it's like my only blue, so I want to arsenal it. Because if I can't play on my opponent's turn, there's kind of no point in me gaining all this tempo. Because I have a five card hand on my turn, but then Ice Thunder doesn't do anything with a five card hand. So to make sure I can arsenal the blue, I pop the E pot there. That, that was another consideration. Um, and then over here, I'm deciding whether to pop my Metacarpus. Uh, again, I do. And this one, the reason is because I want to get rid of this red in my hand. Because if I'm committing or playing Frost Text on my opponent's turn, I need... Like, having two reds in a hand when I want to play a Frost Text is really bad because I can't play the Frost Text, play a thing on my turn, and also Arsenal the blue. Like, if I'm playing Frost Text on my opponent's turn, I want three blues in my hand. So I do pitch the Aether Hail. It's one more damage. I don't need AB4 anymore with the sort of game plan I've sort of switched to or the state I'm in. I don't need my AB4. Um, AB3 is good enough. Um, and I just want to maximize that I draw three blues, which I do. Um, so that's really big. Um, that's that, that, that's really good. And now this Frost Tex is actually dealing three damage, along with obviously setting up a Frost Tex. So that's really good. And then we do also find a third Ice Vein. Cool. And our opponent takes three from the Frost Tex, uh, yeah, from the Frost Bite and having three Frost Texes. And we do our final Ice Vein using a final Insidious Chill trigger. So, yeah, and, and this is what I mean. Now, at this point, my opponent's low enough where it's like they need to be scared of me killing them from like Striders that it's actually really difficult for them to uh, to threaten stuff uh, at me. So, you get Ice Vein. I would have liked to Arsenal the Ice Eternal here, but there was no way to do that while also fusing this Ice Vein. Uh, we just, I, I just Arsenal the. Hypothermia, which is still three damage because of the Frost Axis. Cool, so we get to leak in more damage. Opponents at seven, only one card remaining. So if we draw a red ice card that we can stride us out, we kind of basically have the win. So we're feeling pretty good, but we do need to draw the, the red ice card. Uh, we don't draw a red ice card. Uh, we drew... Well, frosting is like the closest thing we can do. Um, so what I do here is obviously, I mean, my five card hand is useless. So, you know, th th this is why it's really important to have a blue in your arsenal if you're going to try and do like a red ice vein or something. Because you want to be able to push damage on their turn. Because it's very, it's very likely that my opponent ice hand just passes priority on their turn. And if I can't punish them after stripping up, uh, stripping all their cards, my red ice vein was, was kind of wasted. So that's just, that's why, you know, uh, a few turns ago, I pitched my Metacarpus node. Uh, sorry, I, I popped the Amulet of Ice. Right, I explained that earlier. Anyway, so over here, I Hypothermia, and I'm Waning Moon. I'm kind of just trying to fish for information to see if my opponent is, uh, like, to sort of get my opponent to pitch completely. Um, and they do, which is actually a very costly mistake from them. Because now I know there's no way they can break that Frostbite. I know that's dealing them three damage for sure. And then if I just striders out this Frosting, it gives them an additional Frostbite from Icelander. And the Frosting deals one. So that's exactly seven damage. And I know my opponent can't pitch anything. Like they've given me full information basically by pitching to a waning moon, uh, which is like what I was talking about earlier, where it's if you have three frost sexes on you and a frostbite, you shouldn't pitch to anything until the frost the frostbite pops and you're taking damage from that. Because if my opponent just held on to their blue um, until the frostbite start popping, then they can, you know, pitch to that. Uh, they can pitch to black and still block three anyway, but they don't give me information that they that they can't break frostbites anymore. Uh, is is basically uh, the thing. So yeah, so here we just try this out the frosting uh, and and we call it here. If I if I put in didn't make that play, uh, you know I would have held on to my striders and I probably would have played Channel Bleak Expanse on my turn. Because, like I said, like the way my opponent needs to pivot is like with a fused ice vein or something fused to start triggering the chills and amulets. Uh, but Channel Bleak Expanse will stop that, uh, or will make them commit to sort of fusing like on my turn, like if they can respond to Channel Bleak Expanse with like an ice atone from Arsenal or something. But with me at twenty four, like I said earlier, it's actually very difficult for them to deal the full twenty four, uh, e e even with an ice atone, because remember they they don't have e pots, so. 
So the Channel League expense actually potentially could have saved us, at least dragged the game a little longer and put our opponent in a tougher spot. Uh, but anyway, like I guess the, how, how this game evolved was I started, obviously I was very far behind on the board state. At some point in the middle, I did sort of even it out, but then my opponent got ahead again. Um, and that's when I committed to just being fully aggressive. And we did have to get lucky. Um, like, like we got lucky in the sense that we got the back-to-back -back ice veins to sort of hold on to the tempo. Um, on the other hand, our opponent got lucky setting up all that bar state like very early on. And if they had started popping off first, like they used the amulets a little more aggressively, uh, then you know this game could have gone very differently. So yeah, that was the game. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it.